to Show of the Week with Outside Xbox, I'm Jane. And I'm Mike, and this week I've been playing a lot of Peggle 2. Too much Peggle 2. I'm having trouble distinguishing reality from Peggle 2. Help? Meanwhile, now that we're nearing the end of 2013, I've been reminiscing about the year just gone. Ooh, me too, which is why I'm proud to present the first annual 2013 Mike Awards. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The Mike Awards are how we honour the year's outstanding achievements in the field of video games. And the winners are... <coughs> The award for best dog was the most contested category in this, a vintage year for video game pooches. But which computerised canine will take home a Mikey? The nominees are Call of Duty Ghosts for Riley, Grand Theft Auto 5 for Chop, Splinter Cell Blacklist for this dog, Battlefield 4 for these other dogs. And the winner is a surprise late entry. Yes, I know it's a wolf. A new category this year, this award reflects the ever-evolving graphical prowess of our technologically driven industry. The 2013 Mike Award for Best Dong Physics goes to Mount Your Friends. With an honourable mention to the phallic physics of NBA 2K14 featuring cover athlete LeBron James' next-gen junk. For the best flying vehicle that could pick up other vehicles award, it's Grand Theft Auto Online's workhorse of the skies, the Cargo Bob. And we need a flying big rig right now. You were more than a helicopter that could pick up cars, Cargo Bob. You were a friend. And now the winner of the 2013 Mike Award for best musical performance in the jazz, gospel, rap or sea shanty genre. Is this going to run for a while? How many awards are there? Uh, 611. How did you find that much good stuff about 2013 to even talk about? Oi, I will not sit here and have you badmouth a great year in gaming. I'm out of here. Next up, the prize for this year's handsomest video game beard goes to... Oh, hey Andy, how's it going? Yeah, good. I was just thinking about how good some of the games of 2013 oh, were. Finally some positivity. Let me finish. How good some of the games of 2013 were at being bad. Oh, right. That's a weird way to phrase that. Quiet Mike, with your positivity and seeing the best in everything, I'm busy stewing over the five worst, most disappointing games of 2013. Let's begin. Let me guess, you're looking for a broken jaw. We'd often wondered when someone would get around to making a decent game based on the joy of cruising on powerful motorcycles along the open road. With Ride to Hell Retribution, released this year, we're still wondering. He got some crazy drive in him, that's for sure. You ain't getting away from me! Mired in development hell for the better part of five years, Right to Hell eventually coughed its way to release in late June. Previously planned as an open world game, it became crushingly linear to the point where the freedom of the open road was whittled down into a subpar road rash clone. The only real entertainment came from the sex scenes. Imagine I just did massive air quotes with my hands. Prepare for dry humping so unerotic it might actually drop off. Without question, one of the worst games of the year. Still, didn't stop them putting their Metacritic score on the box. Captain, the enemy ships are almost in range. Lieutenant Uhura, open hailing frequencies. No response, sir. Sulu, check off. Prepare to engage hostiles. Aye, aye. Yes, sir. Gotti, prepare torpedoes, fire on my mark. Oh man, a Star Trek game, and based on the J.J. Abrams reboots too, with the proper likenesses of Kirk and Spock and everything. And it's official canon, how could that be bad? It's something that's definitely canon, so it is official Star Trek. How about by making it into a tedious cover-based shooter infested with bizarro bugs, as demonstrated by Eurogamer's Ian Higton in just a few of the hilarious glitches he found during his playthrough. I've never felt closer to you, Spock. Hold it, wait! <laughs> Whoa! Wow. The game was so badly received that J.J. Abrams said he was emotionally hurt by the game and that it damaged Star Trek Into Darkness by association. You keep getting me killed. I thought you had my back. Ah. See what you did, Star Trek the video game? You hurt J.J. Abrams' feelings. You can't take any more of this, Captain. Come on! Oh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> As the only Kinect exclusive game in the Xbox One launch lineup, we had high hopes for Fighter Within. Then we remembered it was a spiritual successor to the apocalyptically dreadful Fighters Uncaged. Then we remembered all fighting games that use Kinect. 
then we played it. <coughs> hey, I thought we ordered this footage to be destroyed. Also, everything about this trailer. You can impress all your friends with your new game and your brand new Xbox One before you take their precious little egos and give them a good pound! Yeah! Fight over there! Presumably the colonial in the title refers to the fact that this came directly out of someone's colon. We all had high hopes for it, even as close to two months before release both we and Sega thought this might finally be the Aliens game to nail the style and tone of the movie. Instead what we got was a game palmed off by Gearbox onto the now departed Timegate Studios. Of the six years it was in development it seems only six months were used to actually make the game. You know a game's particularly bad when it ends up part of a class action lawsuit for false advertising. And request immediate assistance aboard the USS Sulaco of the survivors, myself, two human females. One of the most beloved sci-fi licenses in the world turned into a crappy Call of Duty clone that's about as scary as Scooby-Doo. Lock your daughters up, y'all. Dissing boys just rolled into town. Hang on, why is The Walking Dead on this list? It's a masterpiece of storytelling and emotion that won the Game of the Year award at... Oh, hell no. Oh, that's right, this is the ropey cash-in first-person shooter Walking Dead survival instinct. We love the comics, the TV show and the other Walking Dead video game, which is why we were so disappointed with this linear, ugly, uninspired cash grab. The things I won't do to save my older brother. So, thanks 2013 for those spectacular duds. Now that you've got that out of your system, there'll never be another lousy movie tie-in, connect flop or celibacy-inducing sex scene. Agreed? Agreed. Let's talk in 2014. Yeah, laugh it up, Shannon. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 hold on. Hold on just a minute. Now it's time to see what you've been saying on the site, on YouTube, and having tattooed backwards onto your knuckles and then leaving imprinted on the foreheads of Metro City street thugs. Oh, yeah. Metro City Council got in touch. They kind of want you to stop that. Fine, just the site and YouTube then. First up this week were your comments on the video titled 8 Xbox One Exclusives We Know Almost Nothing About. But there's at least 8 exclusive games on the way for Xbox One in 2014 that we know next to nothing about. Friend of the show Ben Borthwick writes in to say, There's actually been quite a bit from Project Spark with their weekly live streams, although granted it hasn't been reported on much. True, if you go on Project Spark's YouTube channel, address on screen right now, there are loads of videos going into meticulous detail about the game. They are all about an hour long each though. Yeah, we didn't watch them, basically. So, the title of the video was technically correct. You can watch them though, and you totally should if you want to know more about Project Spark. Attractive Maniac, the becoming psycho, is excited for pretty much all of them except D4. I wasn't big on Deadly Premonition. Wow, he is a psycho. He's missing out on great stuff like this. Gold. Angry Pokemon, the wrath of Jigglypuff, meanwhile, pops by to say, Sunset Overdrive looks ace. It kind of looks like a cross between Jet Set Radio and Borderlands. Can definitely see that. Finally, Dan and Day is excited by the Fable Legends trailer. Let me tell you a story of heroes. For there are those who believe the history of Albion is a history of heroes. He says, when Stephen Fry's voice came on, I was sold! Do you want to tell him or should I? Let's just move on to the next set of comments about that video where we played Connect Sports Rivals pre-season and did sweet jet ski jumps and so forth. You're in third! No, no. Ah, ah. no. Mr. Man Guy 17 says, love Andy's pose, really getting into it. Hmm. Luckily professional Kinect expert Dun of Man is standing by to offer advice saying I am actually really good at using Kinect and one of the first things I see that tells me whether someone has experience with Kinect is how far they extend to interact with it. What most people don't know is that Kinect actually tracks your distance really really good. You don't have to extend out really far at all. No, get off the ground. Switch so it on land. <laughs> oh that's not just for Kinect, I do that for everything. T? No, I'm good. Uh, the Double Helo, meanwhile, reasons that clearly the only reason Mike couldn't take out that sniper in the China Rising DLC was because he wasn't racing against anyone to get there first. Back on the Altai range map and this sniper was doing what snipers do best, camping like a total git. Yeah, I do my best work against the clock. We were supposed to wrap this up like two hours ago. It'll be fine. 
Lastly were your comments on last week's show of the week on The Division, in which video producer James's state of decay skills were called into question. Probably didn't want to do that. And I was molested by James Drivatar. Andy Cod 1977 says, Andy, one call to Leicester should be enough to deal with James Drivatar. Just a heads up, mate, but if you're not at the required level, which could be a problem, well, I could be persuaded to make that call and put out a bounty on your behalf. Yeah, I tried that, Andy. Her Drivatar showed up in GTA Online and ran me over. I didn't think that was even possible. She found a way. The Rupert Litterbin, meanwhile, says, Mike could make it up to James by getting him a copy of Scourge Outbreak. <laughs> You mean a random game? Fine, whatever, a random game. And for that comment, the Rupert Litterbin, you win a random game. Is it Scourge Outbreak? Scourge Outbreak! Yes, Finally, Ghosty Faeus contacts us through a spirit medium to comment, Whoa, a scene that wasn't shot on the counter in the kitchen. Keep it up and you might be in the running for an Oscar. He makes a good point. How come it's only the couch and the kitchen around here? I mean, there must be other places. I don't know, you could try going the other way. Uh, okay, uh, wish me luck. Uh-huh. God, there's no escape. It's just these two locations in all directions forever. Yeah, is that a problem? Yeah, I guess not. Great. Between now and next time, get in touch with us on twitter.com slash outside Xbox or book us a face on facebook.com slash outside Xbox. And why not like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash outside Xbox so you never miss an episode. See you next time. <laughs> all right, I'm off. See you in a bit. Oh. Yep.